The Turkish lira is losing value every day. Citizens are seeing their life savings evaporate. Companies are halting operations. And the president thinks the solution is what any economist would tell you is the root of the problem. And his continued belief in this idea is sinking the currency into a further black hole. When will the currency rebound and where will this all end? Let's unpack all of this as we take a deep dive into the crisis of the Turkish lira. Today we're talking about Turkey, whose economy is in shambles. Inflation has just hit 36%. It was just 10 years ago that Turkey was thought of as a beacon of success in the region. It was boasting amongst the highest growth rates out of all the G20 nations. Flashback 20 years ago, and Turkey had a poverty rate of over 30%. But in the subsequent 15 years, that dropped to 8%. And it was just a decade ago that Turkey was getting serious consideration for joining the European Union. But what has happened since then? Well, the economy has taken quite a U-turn, and a lot of people are pointing their fingers at President Erdogan and his questionable economic policies. So let's do a quick introduction on President Erdogan. He got his start in politics when he was elected mayor of Istanbul, of which the media gave him absolutely no shot of winning. He was a true underdog story. And he went on to have quite a successful stint as mayor of Istanbul, solving water shortages, pollution, and traffic problems. After this, he began gaining notoriety across Turkish politics, and he even went on to develop his own party, the Justice and Development Party. And by 2003, Erdogan became the Prime Minister of Turkey. And during his time as Prime Minister, the Turkish economy was soaring, and so was his popularity. But by 2014, he hit his term limit and could no longer continue serving as Prime Minister. So then Erdogan decided to run for President of Turkey. And in 2014, the Turkish people elected Recep Tayyip Erdogan as President of Turkey. And during his time as President, he began moving Turkey away from being a secular nation, something that the beloved Ataturk had fought for. And in recent years, Erdogan's presidency has been plagued with economic turmoil and rising inflation. So in economies where there's inflation, the typical way to fight inflation is by raising interest rates. This lowers demand for borrowing money. Less money is being borrowed, thus less money is being spent in the economy. Thus that lowers demand for products and causes deflationary pressures. This is a standard principle that all economists agree on. But for some reason, President Erdogan disagrees with this and he sees things differently. He believes the way to fight inflation is by lowering interest rates. And even people in the Turkish Central Bank and his ministers of finance have disagreed with Erdogan and wonder what he's been doing. That's why we've seen these positions being a revolving door in recent years. And just last month, we saw another minister of finance, Minister Elvin, resign from his position due to his disagreements with Erdogan and his theories. Erdogan went on to appoint loyal supporter Nurenin Nabati, who people believe are just going to help Erdogan push through his beliefs and wishes for lower interest rates. Inflation has just hit 36%, and the people in Turkey are really starting to feel this economic fallout. So with this inflation, it is weakening the Turkish lira. And part of the reason Erdogan is a proponent of this is because a weaker lira means that Turkish goods are cheaper. Thus, they can export more goods across the world. However, on the other side of the coin, all of a sudden your imports become relatively more expensive. And Turkey's biggest imports are oils, metals, and machinery. And it will be tough for Turkey to keep importing these goods at the rate which they have in the past. And this is problematic because Turkey is run on a trade deficit, which means they're importing more goods than they're exporting. And they're also heavily reliant on foreign investment. And with this rapid inflation, investors and corporations around the globe are beginning to lose trust in the Turkish economy. Just recently, we saw Apple halting all sales in Turkey. And the ones that are hit the hardest are the Turkish people themselves. Many people are struggling to afford basic goods. This has led to a mass exodus of young professionals across the country. In a recent survey from Istanbul's Yeditepe University, it showed that 76% of young people expressed interest in leaving Turkey. In another report, it showed that 
3,000 doctors have left in the past year, and then another 8,000 intend to leave soon. However, so many of the people that want to leave may now not be able to because so much of their life savings has evaporated due to the devaluation of the Turkish lira. So now looking ahead and what's in the forecast for Turkey, well, it's likely that a lot of these problems are going to continue and that inflation will rise if this approach is not reversed. Uh, furthermore, you'll see more companies halt operations or leap the Turkish market altogether. And then considering the rising cost of imported goods, this is going to cause Turkey to become reliant on internal production, which is going to cause a lot of problems in the short term because the Turkish economy will not have the capacity to meet the needs of the Turkish people anytime soon. And then this will lead to many shortages across the economy. And then with poverty rising in Turkey, we're likely to see the, the lower and even the lower middle class struggling to afford their basic goods. The forecast for the Turkish economy is quite gloomy unless President Erdogan reverses course on his stance on interest rates. However, there is some light at the end of the tunnel because the next election in Turkey is in 2023. In just two years time, the Turks will have a chance to go to the polls and elect a new government that maybe has a different stance on interest rates. However, it's likely that the Turks are still in for some tough times ahead, which hopefully there's an end to the madness soon because the Turkish economy truly has a bunch of potential and it would be great to see them get back on track where they were 10 years ago. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. We'll make more videos like this in the future. And let me know in the comments below what you think of the Turkish economy or any other economies that you'd be interested in seeing videos about.